Welcome back for another video. The year was 1930, the birth of the World Cup and Uruguay were the tournament's first ever hosts. From premature funerals to managers knocked out with chloroform, this is the true story of the craziest World Cup of all time. For this video we've used a suite of tools to upscale the images and bring them to life in colour. Every photo has been processed to tell the story like never before, so if you enjoy the content hit subscribe and like the video. So in the 1930 World Cup the referees wore suits during the games while officiating, quite the contrast to today's referee attire. The Bolivian national team played in berets and the Romanian team was selected by their king, not the manager. All very unusual but we're just getting started. The commercial flight revolution only started making headway in the late 1930s, so all the European sides sailed together across the Atlantic Ocean on board a steamship. The players trained on the top deck and they stopped off in Rio de Janeiro on the way to pick up the Brazilians. Jules Ramey, FIFA's third ever president, travelled with them himself with a trophy in his suitcase. Egypt, the only African representatives, were supposed to join too, but they set off late and missed the boat. The pharaohs telegraphed their apologies in Morse code, however as a consequence of their withdrawal the tournament was left with an awkward 13 teams. When the football kicked off on 13th July 1930, Argentina quickly established themselves as the bad boys. Police had to intervene after a violent scrap in their game against Chile, but it was their 6-1 semi-final win over the USA where things got really ugly. A first half horror tackle left an American midfielder, Ralph Tracy, with a broken leg. Remarkably, Tracy played on and even had a couple of chances, but at half time he had to come off. Certainly something you'd never see in the modern game, however back then substitutions didn't exist. If anyone got injured you played on a man down, so the USA played on with 10 men. Tempers were running high after the incident and the game descended into a mass brawl. An Argentine player knocked four teeth out of an American's mouth and another ended up in hospital with injuries to his stomach. In possibly the most comedic moment in World Cup history, the American physio Jack Cole rushed on the field to confront referee Langenas Bell. He tripped and smashed a bottle of chloroform in his pocket. The fumes knocked him unconscious and he had to be stretched off. Here's a photo of him being revived. The final saw host Uruguay take on their hated neighbours Argentina. The two finalists couldn't even agree which ball to use so they played each half of a different ball. Hector Almanco Castro, who scored Uruguay's first goal in the tournament, also scored in the final and he had one arm. His nickname El Manco literally translates as the one-armed one. He accidentally amputated his right arm with an electric saw at the age of 13. More than 15,000 Argentine fans headed to Montevideo for the game on board a steamship, but the ship got lost in heavy fog and they arrived a day late to the news that their team had lost, kicking off further riots. During the trip home, Romanian midfielder Alfred Eisenbisser Ferrari fell ill and he was taken to hospital when the boat stopped in Italy. The team continued their journey back home and when they arrived back in Bucharest without him, a rumour spread that he had sadly died. Even his distraught mother was convinced and she made funeral arrangements, only for Ferrari to walk through the door on the day of the wake, she fainted on the spot. Still it wasn't all bad, Ferrari recovered to compete for Romania in both figure skating and bobsleigh at the next Olympics, what a time to be alive. 76 years later the 1930 World Cup was still finding ways to make headlines. The first World Cup hat-trick was always thought to have been scored by Argentine Guillermo Stabila against Mexico, but 76 years later after the cup's conclusion it was formally declared to have actually been scored by American Bert Paternald against Paraguay. The source of the confusion came from lack of reporting like you have in today's FIFA World Cups. One of three goals was thought to have been scored by Tom Flory, yet after an old match report from the game was found, it was confirmed that the third goal had been scored by Peyton Elder. A manager knocked out by chloroform, a one-armed footballer, a premature funeral, mass riots and more. That's the story of the craziest World Cup ever. If you enjoyed it please hit like and subscribe for more original content to come.